Hey, my unique followers. It's me, Kelly, the creative mastermind behind Unique Designs by C and K. Now, today we're gonna finish off the vases that I've been started. My paint, pour, my paint pour vases that I have started. I have a total of four that we're gonna do. If you notice, I'm using gloves because when you're safety, safety first when you're dealing with resin. You need to put gloves on. So, I've already done the initial layer, so we're going to do our last layer of resin on these. And um, I learned this tip, especially if you're trying to figure out you did this beautiful paint pour on vases, how to finish them off. I got this wonderful tip from Mixed Media Girl watching one of her videos. Shout out to Mixed Media Girl. She gave some advice on how to finish off one of her vases. Now, you could do it two ways. You can put a cup underneath this and pour the resin over it. Or you can put it on a tumbler turner, a cup turner, and do it that way. So, I got my resin here. I use uh, I use rubbing alcohol to help with the bubbles because I let my resin sit for 10 minutes. Quick tip. And a lot of the bubbles will rise to the top and they're easier to get out. Especially if you're new to the resin, you have a thing called micro bubbles that happen in your resin. And it can really be upsetting when you're trying to get a crystal clear pour and you all of a sudden you got these micro little bubbles so rubbing i use rubbing alcohol to help get rid of the bubbles and i let my resin sit now some people they put it in warm water to help raise the temperature of the resin a little bit so it's easier for the bubbles to float to the surface I let mine sit for 10 minutes and then I hit it with rubbing alcohol and I'm good to go. Now, the resin I use, because these were, uh, this is the, the first layer was done yesterday, is it's that my resin sets, this particular resin I use sets in 24 hours and I can unmold in 12. I preferably like to leave it for 24 hours in a mold if I'm using a mold. But this particular case, because it's on a turner, I let it turn for 12 hours and then, then I turn off the turner and I let it finish setting. Because by that time that resin is solidified so it won't drip underneath once, it start, it, once it's fully solidified. It just needs to set so it's not so soft to the touch. My resin right now, this is the first layer. I'm going on to this last layer of my resin for this, for these vases. Now, no, if you feel like some of the resin didn't take to part of the vase, your final layer normally takes care of that. See, I used, my first layer I used, um, where is it? Just had them. I used a pigment in there to give it a little extra sparkle. And I don't know where I set. I do not know where I set him at. I set him somewhere. I have a habit of setting pigment around in my office, and then I no longer can find it until like three days later. That's just how I roll in my office. And if you hear a little bit of noise in the background, it's just my beloved son, because I can't tell him no. He loves his video games, so I my office is in an open space, so there's a TV there. Ah, uh, there it is. I used, for my first layer, I used a Meyer Spring Dazzling Diamond, and just a little bit goes a long way. And another reason you, you can uh, hear the TV a little bit is my children like to see what mom's doing. So, I have my office in an open area that's well ventilated. Don't worry, because certain resins ha do have fumes, but 
This particular resin has a low fume rate, but I still have it next to a window, so I can still ventilate without ha without any risk. So, what I like to do, I like because I'm right-handed. When I pour, is I like to have my turners set a certain way. So sometimes I have to turn them on and see which way they're going. You can do it whichever way you feel like. I like my uh, I like them rotating a certain way. There we go. I like mine rotating this way because it's easier for me to move the resin around. Now you can do this two one or two ways. You can just pour and let the resin just rotate around or there's a reason why we have latex gloves on. You can use your hands to move the resin and smooth it out as it turns. And I just, this one, because uh, these are smaller vases, I use 60 milliliters. 60 milliliters of resin is enough for me to coat two of these vases. The other vases that we'll do takes uh, more, it takes 80. And the particular resin I use is called Pudo, and I get it off of Amazon, just FYI. And I just pour a little bit. I just let the resin just drip around. Now, I have a silicone pan underneath, so it's easier for me to do cleanup. You don't have to press your hand to the vase when you're moving the resin. Like you see, I just move it around with my hand. Coat my bottom. So I use a silicone pan underneath my turner. You can get them off Amazon because you can use a silicone dog mat. And I just move my resin around. As so. And I take my hand up because I have a little bit of resin on my glove to do my edges. I like just using, let it run around on its own. It'll coat itself. So don't panic if you think you don't got enough resin. You do got enough resin on your glove if you're using your hands. It's easier for you to control where the resin is going versus pouring directly under the vase. I like to have a little bit of control over where my resin is going so I can make sure that I've coated everything. I come down, I pull the resin around. Now, if you see that you get bubbles, those will actually pop as it turns. I found that it does that. If not, you can hit it with a little rubbing alcohol or a little to uh, little heat gun. You see my bubbles all uh, will pop. I can take my finger in there and pop them. I just lightly put my hand against it because it will catch the resin and just move it. So I like to make sure I get an even layer on both. And I go back in and I'll add more here and there because I'll see spots like, oh, I didn't put enough resin there. What was I thinking? I just move my resin around just lightly with my glove. And uh, this is um, just a, something I learned because I started getting into a lot of the paint pours and acrylic, um, acrylic paint pours, fluid art. I just really enjoy creating. Now, I do have vases for sale on my sh my shop. I will put my shop link in the description. But these particular vases, these little ones, I have a Mother's Day box that I'm doing that will be available at the end of the week. 
on my shop. And these are part of that set. Each box will have a different color. So I'm just finishing off my Mother's Day boxes so they're ready to go to their new homes. I just come back in. Sometimes I feel like I didn't put enough resin somewhere. So... I just move it around. And the resin sometimes has a mind of its own. Now, if you have already mixed your resin and all suddenly it's starting to smoke and it's getting really hot, that's something we call a flash cure. I immediately dump water into the cup and I take it outside because a flash cure creates more fumes and it can be toxic. I've had that and that normally happens if I've poured too much resin because this particular, the resin I normally use a lot is for shallower molds, tumblers, doing a small coats. So just be aware if your resin starts to heat up and it starts to smoke and do weird things, immediately put water in it and get it outside. Because you don't want those flumes in your house. Oh. Uh-oh. And I have long hair, so I just noticed that I had a hair get into it. So I just take my tweezers. Sometimes it's a pain. And get a hold of that hair. My tweezers are well loved. And I also I keep my hair pulled back. If you're new to resin and you have long hair, pull your hair back. Pull it up into a bun. Because getting resin in your hair is not fun. I've done that. I've made the mistake and just had my hair braided and not pulled up on the top of my head into a bun. And I was in the middle of pouring a vase. Not pouring a vase. I was pouring some coasters. And my hair dipped in there. So... And if you feel like you are nice and good with this, like, I'm kind of, I'm happy with him. This final layer, actually, sometimes I have to fight with it. They look really good. I'm very happy with them. I might have poured too much resin, but I'll do something fun with him. So we'll put him off to the side. Now, for me to grab my turner, I have to take my gloves off. So we're just going to take my gloves off. And you're going to watch me lift it. I have a big silicone mat, so it's not going to affect it too much. Me, me taking my gloves off, I just have to be careful. So I just pick my turner up because the way I have my camera and turn him. Now he's not on yet and we'll turn him on in a minute. Let me get him situated. So if you're doing resin, do not have anything dangling because you will get resin on it and you will not be a happy camper. Like, all right, so let's, oh, First time, they're ready for me. They were ready for me. Now they're ready for their last layer of resin. Don't worry if you see that sometimes that resin didn't take the first on the first layer. Your second layer will take care of that. And you'll get a smooth coat then. Also, this also helps for when your paint pours do come out a little matte 
And you're like, where'd this shine go? I just seen this on so-and-so's video. Don't worry about that. It's because they already put their varnish or their resin. Some people use varnish. I like resin because I like to give the glass a little stability. And if you want to know where I got my vases from, I got them from the dollar store. I have a dollar store. So whatever um, version of a Dollar Tree you have. Because I have Dollar Tree in Michigan. I'm in Michigan. So I have Dollar Tree in Michigan. So I'm able to get a good deal on these vases. On either one. But I just come in here. I'd already put a rubbing alcohol in here. So he's already sat to get rid of most of the bubbles. But don't be afraid to be a little extra with the resin. Especially if you feel like you're not getting enough resin on him. Like, for some reason, I get a hole in my finger. <laughs> Between my fingers, I try to keep them together. So it's easier to manipulate the resin. And I just pour it and I let the resin just do, let the resin and the turner do all the work. Just guide it. I just come around because I like to watch and make sure that I'm coating things when I got my hand underneath here. I find it easier to move the resin with my hand this way. But if you're left-handed, it'll be easier to do it. Um, use your right hand to guide the resin. I use my left hand to guide the resin because I find it easier to manage the resin while I am pouring. I just move them. Now this is the, I'm using 80 milliliters of resin for these because they're a little larger so they take a little more. And just now, if you feel like you need a third layer, because I only do two layers, if you feel like it's not smooth enough, it's okay to do another layer because I do thin layers. These are thin layers that I'm doing. So don't be afraid to do a thinner layer. Now, if you have questions, please put them in the comments below. I love seeing your questions. I love trying to help you find answers and let you create because I do like to create. I'm getting more into doing these types of videos because I like creating and I like sharing what I create with everybody. Because I've learned so much over the last, I've been doing this for about three years now. Three or four years. I've been around art all my life. But it took COVID hitting in our state, Michigan having our nor uh, state lockdown. For me to really discover what really spoke to me. What's really me. I used to do a lot of watercolors, but I didn't do anything really light and airy. I was bold and let's do this, lots of color.
Yes, I use also use the same diamond dust by uh, my my spring on these guys too. I do like it. And with that one, disclaimer, a little bit goes a long way. I mean, a little bit. That is a powerful sparkle right there. I made that mistake one day. Thinking, trying to do my normal measurements, how I do my mica powders. And um, I wanted to play with them. And um, scooped out the same amount that I normally do. Whew, almost knocked me over with that sparkle. So, for you, if you want to add a little sparkle to your pores or your resins, Meyer Spring, the Diamond Dust, Dazzling Diamond Dust, will do the charm. But a little bit goes a long way. So, I think he's pretty much good. I think I got him really good. Now, he had an accident last night, so. I'm hoping I don't have a repeat of that accident again today. If not, just, if you have something happen, and it, for some reason, it fell off the turner or whatever, I have these little, they're foam inserts, and sometimes they wear out, or I didn't see them right. And the vase will work its way off the turner itself. One of them did have an accident last night. He doesn't look bad. So, I think he's pretty much coated. I'll know more when, I, when he sets tomorrow. And I take him off the turner and take a good look at him. But these rotate for about 12 hours. And just so you know what I'm using on my, my tumbler turners is these little pieces. Because uh, they come in different sizes for different mouth uh, widths. So you can also get these off of Amazon too. So until next time, be you, be unique, and I look forward to creating more with you guys.